avoid the impeller damage due to cavitation and cavitation is a very serious problem in pumping and we want to set a standard to avoid cavitation but first how do we try to imagine how could we avoid cavitation we were talking about vapor pressure we were talking about the speed of the impeller we were talking about material of the impeller pressure of the eye so try to imagine guys what can we change or move or detect in order to have a standard to be sure that cavitation won't occur so try to think it don't go to the next slide before you try to imagine it it's a good exercise and what the pumping industry came into let's say consideration for cavitation is the famous NSPH which is the net specific pressure at head Essentially, how much pressure do you have in the pressure and the system heads before it goes to the pump? And we have this required, so the minimum needed to avoid cavitation. So the minimum pressure to avoid cavitation. Okay. This data may be calcu calculated, but you don't want to because you doing these experiments will imply using your pump in and forcing it to cavitation, and you don't want that. So this is already done by the supplier. This is in a manual, in, the, in all the typical function, how much power requirements and how much the revolution, maximum revolution per minute, maximum diameter of the impeller and so on. You will find the NSPH requirements. Okay. As I told you before, you can calculate or do an experiment, but I don't recommend you. But of course, if you don't have the supplier data or you don't know what type of pump is, you will need to do it by yourself. So this is a limit pressure. Let's call this the minimum pressure you need to have before it goes inside the pump. And of course, it, this is done to avoid cavitation. So one little tip. It is near the boiling point of the substance of operation, but not exactly that point. So maybe you thought, well, if the vapor pressure of water is, I don't know, maybe 2.5 atmosphere, that's my limit. Well, that's not actually true because that's in the suction. But recall that in the eye, you lower pressure, so this value will lower a little bit. And you don't want that. You need the actual value in which you will be always safe operating at different temperature ranges and relatively small ranges of pressure. So one interesting thing right here, it depends on the vapor pressure. So recall that vapor pressure depends on substance. You don't know that? Well, it's obvious. Alcohol will boil differently as water, and water will boil differently as crude oil, and crude oil will definitely boil differently as other substances. So, normally, as you can see, we have R, what's the requirement? That's for the pump, but normally we have an SPHA, which is the net specific pressure at head available. So, one thing is what does my system or pump needs? And the other thing is, what does my system has already? So, you have here this little system. One thing is, this pump needs at least three atmospheres in the suction charge. And one other thing is, in this system I have right here, this atmospheric and the loss of pressure will decrease, so I have less than one atmosphere. So the available is what I actually have, and the require is what I actually need to avoid cavitation. So in this case, if I have a NSPH of 1 available and I need 3 to avoid cavitation, well, this won't work. You will need to increase the pressure before actually uh, working with the pump. So what you will want to do is maybe pressurize this tank in order to increase pressure and maybe this will be, I don't know, maybe four atmospheres before actually going inside the pump or the other thing will be change the pump because three atmosphere is a lot and you don't want to spend or change the operation of the system so you will need to have to change the pump one pump that has, I don't know, maybe 0.5 in NSPHR so please make sure never uh, confuse the required and the available so by logic, you are probably wondering, NSPH available must be always greater than the required, and that's true. 
actually we have this rule of thumb not only must be greater than but must be at least 10% so that 10% will be safe enough to avoid cavitation because one thing is the calculation and experiments but you don't want to risk the limits or the limit value for your pumping system so let's say add an extra 10% for safety and how do we calculate vapor pressure guys? probably you don't know or hopefully you know it there are many ways to calculate vapor pressures you can go directly on the internet and find them in tables you know that for every substance you have a temperature and you have a vapor pressure you could also use the graphs or diagrams which is not that recommended or you can calculate it which is a little bit more normal you may use Clausius Clapeyron equation which is not that perfect Antoine equation is kind of good so we're going to use it probably or you can you could use many other software normally in chemical engineering we use suspense software to find out the temperature and vapor pressure for many substances now how do we actually calculate this guy right here well we want this to be the suction minus the saturation so imagine we have the system and we want to know how much do we have here available well just calculate the P suction minus the P of saturation okay and that will give you a delta of P and if it's very positive well that's good if it's equal or nearly to zero that's kinda bad and if it's negative well you're already fucked so this is in general to have it in PSI or kilopascal in units of pressure normally in the mechanical energy equation that we're using right now we use joule per kilogram or meters to the second power divided by second to the second power and how do we do that remember it's only dividing by density and not only that we also use the mechanical energy equation with length equivalent which is meter or feet so how do we do that well you know this is this is only matter of gra dividing by gravity so wait for it yeah recall that we need this we need to calculate the available and we need to know the required so once we calculate the available probably the required and PSHR is many times given in units of length so you will probably need to do this calculate the pressure in the suction calculate the pressure of saturation or vapor pressure of the substance at that temperature so that's very important at that temperature and then divide it by density of the fluid and gravity then you will have the NP NPSHA and you will be able to compare it so let's let us do an exercise I'm going to do it in the next video so keep you posted in the next video this was a free preview you want to get full access go to my incompressible flow course the link is in the description of the video you will get all access not only that you get a very straightforward uh, user-friendly interface so for instance you were analyzing or studying pumps you have it here the pump block and then you have the sections of your for example studying the types of pumps you can go here and you have all the classes right here not to mention that you also have introduction and conclusion of every one of these so for instance if you were studying positive displacement pumps the video is right here if you were studying positive displacement pumps in rotatory and reciprocal are also included here centrifugal pumps which is a very important topic in this course you have it right here